Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Airsoft and Airsoft Insider doing a Firearms Friday today. Today we are taking a look at my new carry piece, my new carry conceal firearm that I generally carry on me every day. Before I was carrying a uh, 40 caliber Smith & Wesson, um, just a little bigger than I liked. It was about the same size as a Glock 17 and uh, just didn't carry it as often as I like. It mainly became a briefcase gun. I wanted something that I would actually carry basically every day, and that led me to the venerable 357 Magnum revolver. In this case, a 357 Magpug from Charter Arms. This is a snub nose revolver, obviously, with about a two and a quarter inch barrel and a uh, compact frame size. Um, the thing is very small, fits very well. Before we start digging into this, one thing to discuss. Looks like it's loaded. It is not. It is actually filled with snap caps, specifically KP Tactical 38 Special snap caps. Aluminum, cheap, available in a pack of 10 on Amazon and uh, with free prime shipping. Can't argue with that. So the reason why I went with this guy was two things. One, I love stainless finish revolvers, very nice. Two, I wanted something compact that I could carry basically every day. My carry options for this are if I'm wearing shorts or something a little more casual, I get an Uncle Mike's number four in pocket holster. Now, the Uncle Mike's website says this should fit in a number three, a size three. It does not. It fits in a size four if you want to have any degree of trigger covering at all. The size three is like that. And that's not safe when you're carrying, especially not when you're carrying in your pocket. This guy fits nicely in a pocket. And because it's a revolver, it isn't just a solid block of metal or polymer. It has some curve to it. It looks more like a bundle of keys or something like that for a little more discreet carry. If I'm wearing an untucked shirt um, or in winter weather, you gotta bust out the leather. In this case, we've got a Gould and Goldrich um, belt slide holster and it is not designed for this gun it's just designed for a Smith & Wesson J-frame but it fits very nicely in there good trigger coverage nothing gonna accidentally get in there and pull your trigger and um, it just requires just a little bit of molding with a um, by putting a plastic bag over the front and sliding it in leaving it overnight worked fantastically so enough about carry options, let's talk about the gun itself. One thing you'll notice, these gorgeous wood laminate grips. It originally came with this, which is a very comfortable range grip, rubber, skinny, um, but it was just a little longer than I liked for carry use. I mean, it is a full hand grip. Um, I didn't love the rubberized coating on it and in pocket carry, it would actually stick out the top of my pocket regardless of whatever pants or shorts I was wearing. The thing was always, always visible. So I wanted a set of boot cut grips or something like boot cut grips. I love the secret service grips from Eagle Grips. They were just a little outside of my price range. I also didn't like the fact that they were only available in a like walnut style finish. I like this, love this finish. So what this is, is this is from Altamont Grips and you can't buy this model. This is just, uh, Altamont Grips is one of the very few companies that's actually making grips for Charter Arms revolvers. Um, but it had like a little extended piece that went down and I'll show a picture at the end of this video showing how it was before and how it was after I changed it. But it's had an extended piece. I didn't love that and that had the same problem as that one, is that it would fall or it would expose out of my pocket. So I cut the bottom off, smoothed it out a little bit, re-rounded all those edges, and now I am left with a very comfortable two finger grip, and considering you do most of your gripping with this finger anyways, um, and I can tuck that underneath and get a good purchase on it when I am shooting. It's a very, very comfortable grip. It doesn't print badly at all, and it just looks good. I mean, look at that thing. This is super, super classy looking. Best part is these grips retail before being modded, obviously, uh, for about 40 bucks, so not too expensive. The reason that I have this loaded with snap caps is first off, so that I can be handling it in a safe manner, not with 
actual uh, ammunition. This is what we normally keep this thing loaded with. These are some uh, Hornaday 357 Magnum. Um, these are the American Gunner line. Um, more about these in a second. They work quite well. Um, but to talk about some of the functions of the gun, this is a, a double action or single action firing revolver. So you can either just pull the trigger. Again, we are shooting snap caps, which is the safest way both for your shooting environment as well as for your gun. When you're shooting it in double action mode, that trigger pull is long and eventually it breaks. Don't love that. On my trigger scale, it actually is off the scale. It will, it just keeps pulling and pulling. And this thing caps out at eight pounds. So you got about a 12 or about a, probably ever, it's been reported as being a 10 to 12 pound double action trigger pull. That's about normal and about what you want on a uh, carry revolver. In single action mode, it's a much better story. Before we do that, I have actually smoothed out, shortened and rounded that hammer spur a little bit. It gets caught less, it's a lot more comfortable, and frankly, it just looks nice. So, in single action mode, so you pull that back to cock it, your trigger is obviously decreased. This is gonna be very difficult to get on camera, but let's see what we can do. So that guy was about four and a half pounds. With something like this, you obviously always want to take an average, about three and a half pounds. Let's do one more for good measure. About three pounds. So you have about a three to three and a half pound trigger pull in single action mode. That's great. That's very good for an out of the box revolver. No work done on the hammer trigger assembly at all. Um, you're going to want to train both ways. You're going to want to train double action. You're going to want to train single action. Um, obviously, if you ever have to use this firearm, you're probably not going to have time to manipulate that hammer, pull it back, and shoot. It's going to be a situation where you are most likely pulling it and pulling the trigger. So you're going to want to train with both. Nice part about this is that the newer charter arms, some of the earlier ones, the hammer stuck up quite a bit and actually blocked that rear sight picture. Caused some issues where you basically, in order to get a good aim, you actually had to be firing in single action mode. Um, but this one, it is low enough, the sights are there, you have a good pronounced front sight, some lovely, lovely ports, which makes some really fun fireballs when you're shooting this thing, uh, when you're shooting full load 357 out of it. Um, but it's, it's just a nicely put together revolver. And the best part, it was inexpensive. It's about a $320 revolver with some $40 grips on it. It's not expensive and it's certainly better than you would find from like Taurus or uh, Rossi or some of those other companies that are just putting out those really garbage revolvers. You've got great cylinder lockup. You don't have a lot of in shake. I haven't had any shaving of lead or anything like that in my testing of it so far. You've got a good trigger, uh, good stainless construction, and the only issue that you're gonna have with this is accessories. You're not gonna find a lot of grips for it. There just aren't a lot out there. Um, you can find some from uh, Eagle grips. You can find some from Altamont, and that's really about it. Holsters are pretty easy to find. It's about the same size as a J-frame, and for the most part, J-frame holsters will fit. This is a J-frame holster. The size three is a J-frame holster, but again, if you get an Uncle Mike's, get a size four, don't get a size three, don't make the mistake that I did, uh, or buy it on Amazon so you can try it out and send it right back, which is what I had to do. Um, last thing we'll talk about is my reasoning behind going with a 357 Magnum instead of a smaller, lighter 38 Special. Ballistically, the 38 Special is okay. It's not great. Any gun is better than no gun. Any round is better than no round. You're better off having a 22 long rifle handgun than no handgun in the event that, you know, God forbid you actually have to use it. But a 357 Magnum revolver is really like two guns in one because you can fire both 357 Magnum rounds and you can fire 38 special rounds. 357 Magnum revolvers are generally built a little bit heavier, a little bit beefier to handle 
the higher power of the 357 RAM, and this one is no exception. This guy comes in at right around 20 ounces, which is not bad at all. The, three, the 38 Special model of this comes in, I want to say 17 or 18 ounces, so it's a few ounces lighter, and where that weight's going to come in is in the frame. Where that weight becomes nice is when you're shooting it. It's very comfortable to shoot this with 38 Specials. 38 Specials, this thing is just, I mean, it feels like a 22 Magnum. It's, there's nothing there. Uh, with those ports, you're able to easily get your follow-up shots. The thing stays where you want it to be. Um, it just works very, very well. With 357 Magnum rounds, this thing is punishing. It is something that you are going to want to train with. You're going to want to know how it shoots, how it reacts to those rounds, and most importantly, how your follow-up shots are going to be. Because this thing with 357 rounds, literally, even with the ports, you get like muzzle flip to about that. You know, and you can quickly bring it down if you have good grip, but physics are going to win in uh, any gun battle. Uh, so train, 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 train. Train with 38 Special, and until you're comfortable with 357 Magnum, you can get some very good 38 Special uh, carry loads. You can get some really good jacket hollow points and expanding rounds and things like that um, until you are more comfortable with 357. Basically, like I said, two guns in one. If you have somebody who's just learning how to use firearms, this is a good option because they don't have to worry about, oh, I'm going to have a strength to rack the slide. Am I going to remember that the safety's off? Am I going to remember all these other things that I need to remember before using this gun in an emergency situation with a revolver? It's literally pull and go. And revolvers today are much safer, safer than revolvers tomorrow. This guy has a, see if we can get it on video here. It has a transfer bar. So you see that little, there's a, the hammer doesn't actually hit the primer. There's no, you see there's no extended hole nub there to hit the round. What it does is it hits that little metal bar back there. And what that does is hits the primer on your round. However, it can only be hit if that little guy right there is in place. That little metal flap. It's kind of hard to see without pointing this thing at my face. Try to avoid that. Um, that little guy right there is what allows this to connect with this. That little guy is only going to be there if you are pulling the trigger while that hammer is dropping. So you have to be firing. You can see while I drop the hammer here, it stays in place. That's really hard to get in there. It stays in place and allows that to hit. But let's pull and release the hammer, or excuse me, the trigger, and let that go forward. You see that drops out of the way, which means that this will not fire unless you're pulling the trigger. You're not, it, it's very rare to have a negligent discharge, especially on these when you're carrying them, you know, in double action mode, where you have that long, heavy trigger pull. It's very deliberate action firing this gun in double action. Single action, that's a whole other story, and you should probably be carrying this on a live round with that hammer cocked back. That's not recommended. So, um, in short, if you're looking for a carry concealed pistol, you want something that you can train with. You want something you can afford to train with. You want something that you can uh, afford your ammo with, that you can afford the gun, that you can afford the punishment of shooting it. Um, I've carried a lot of different guns, uh, from little 380, uh, a little Ruger uh, LCP. Love that thing. That thing was great, except it was hard to train with because it was so lightweight that it hurt to shoot. It was just not the most fun gun to shoot. Um, so it kept me from using it a lot at the range, and technically I probably wasn't very safe with that gun. Honestly, just because it, I couldn't practice with it as much as I would like. This I can practice with all day, especially with 38s, and throw a couple rounds 357, make sure that I still know what I'm doing, make sure I know where my point of aim is going to be, and you're good to go. As far as point of aim, you're definitely going to want to test that out because some ammo is going to be very different point of aim. You want to make sure that your carry ammo is reliable and that you know where the hell it's actually going to shoot when you have to use it. Um, some users are reporting that this guy shoots very low. With that Hornaday ammo, I'm pretty much right where I need it to be. I don't have any complaints about point of aim, it's shooting where it needs to be. But if it is shooting low, you can do some things, you can file off this, the site a little bit just to kind of make it work a little bit better for you. Why I chose this ammo um, 
there was good information online about it. Um, it has good penetration. It meets all of those FBI standards of what you want your penetration to be when it comes to ammo. It expands well, and it gets good velocity out of a short barrel like this. So that's why I went with that round. Plus, it was inexpensive. I know you, know, you shouldn't trust your life to cheap ammo, but gotta afford to shoot it, gotta afford to carry it, and the performance is where I want it to be. So, this is the beginning of a new series. We're gonna start covering my firearms, my actual firearms, um, in videos on Friday, Firearm Friday. So stay tuned to the channel on Fridays where I will be discussing my real firearms, my carry pieces, some of my real projects, and we'll be just catching up to some of the things that I am doing on the channel. This was a long video, this was one take, one shot. I'm tired. Thanks for watching.